guys welcome back to the channel today we are doing another episode of college student cooking and i've kind of posted this recipe before on my tiktok but this is kind of just a little bit more of an in-depth version i'm going to be making a1 meatloaf and i haven't decided if i'm going to do mashed potatoes or like diced red tomatoes i don't know we'll make the decision as we go but we're gonna make the meatloaf for sure so first i'm gonna grab all my ingredients Okay, so all the ingredients that you will need is ground beef or ground turkey, whatever meat you like to use, Italian breadcrumbs, fresh green peppers and onions, and then your seasoning of choice, but mainly A1. It's called A1 meatloaf, so you obviously need a lot of A1 sauce. I do have two other smaller bottles, but I think this will be enough for this recipe. And then your seasonings. I personally like to pull on mainly Italian seasoning when I'm making this and lemon pepper. But I do like to also add in garlic salt and onion powder. Okay, so I just washed my hands. And the first thing you're going to do is cut up your green pepper and onion. Now, this is totally kind of personal preference as to how much you want to put in there. I personally like a lot, so I'm using a little bit more than average. Also, I don't measure things on eyeball. So I'm going to cut up my green pepper. These don't have to be super precise, um, seeing as they're just like kind of going to get meshed into the actual meatloaf itself. But you don't want super thick pieces either. A tornado flew around my room before you came. Excuse the mess it made. It usually doesn't rain in Southern California, much like Arizona. My eyes don't shed tears, but boy, they pour. When I'm thinking about you, you know, no, no, no. I've been thinking about you, you know, no, no. I've been thinking about you, do you think about this day? small pan we're gonna melt some butter and then put in our onion and pepper mix once your butter is melted you're just gonna toss in those green peppers and onions now as far as seasoning goes i don't actually season it i just take like a cap full of dale seasoning or just any marinade that you have also you really don't have to season it because whenever you throw it in the meatloaf you're going to be adding seasonings anyways i just like to do this every now and then i'm actually going to do two capfuls of the dale seasoning because i do have a lot of green peppers and onions now I'm gonna let them sweat a little bit. Isn't that what all the chefs say? I'm just gonna basically let this sit for a little minute. I'm not really trying to cook them, just kind of getting a little color on them. Okay, so I'm just letting those green peppers and onions go over there. But while we are waiting, we can go ahead and get started on our actual actual meatloaf. Because I'm a broke college student, I don't actually have like a meatloaf pan. So I just go to Dollar Tree and get one of these right here and it works perfectly fine. And because I don't like touching raw ground beef or honestly raw meat in general, I put on gloves for this process, especially because I have nails and I don't want it getting underneath them. I do have a smaller pan because this is just for me and then like leftovers so there's I don't have to cook a whole lot. Okay so you can't really tell but I got my ground beef in here. I'm just going to break it apart. 
While we are doing this, you can go ahead and have the oven preheating at 375. Now that all of our ground beef is broken apart, we're gonna go ahead and add in all of our seasonings, things like that. I'm gonna take off one glove just to pour in the seasonings and then I'm just gonna get another one so that I can actually mash everything together. So I'm gonna add in my Italian seasoning, garlic salt, onion powder, lemon pepper, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add in some A1. Again, I don't measure, you kinda just have to eyeball it. Start little by little and then work your way up. I know it seems like I'm pouring a lot in here, but when you mix everything together, it's really not that much. And then we're gonna add in some breadcrumbs. This, you also start little by little. And, one, and then once you form it together, you'll be able to tell if you need to add more or less. And now you're gonna add in those green peppers and onions that we had sauteing on the stove. Now that you have all your ingredients in there, you're just gonna mix it all together. And this right here will kind of tell you if you need to add more A1 sauce if you'd like, or if you need to add more breadcrumbs based on if it's holding itself together or if it's just kind of falling apart. So I'm not actually forming it right now. I'm just mixing all of the ingredients, the seasonings together, just so that everything is well combined. Now I feel like everything is well combined. I'm going to take a look at it depending on the texture of it and like try and kind of form it together to see if you need more breadcrumbs or not. I'm gonna add just a little bit more cause I don't feel like I have enough. And I will say I'm about to grab this really weird so that I don't put raw ground beef on the actual thing itself. Once you are done kind of combining everything, your mixture should look something like this. And now I'm gonna form it in the shape of meatloaf so I can put it in the pan. Funny story about this recipe, my mom would make this at least like once a month cause me and my dad loved it. And I was actually the one who found the recipe whenever, you know, they still had the old fashioned newspaper that they would have delivered to your house every Sunday. There was some newspaper art, or not an article, but like some ad, and on the back of it, it had A1 meatloaf recipe on it. And so I looked into it and I was like, mom, you need to make this. And then she started making it. And ever since it has been one of my favorite meals. And I think it might be my favorite meal to make. It's really good, super flavorful and relatively easy. If you feel like your meatloaf isn't sticking or holding together well, add some more breadcrumbs as well as some more A1 sauce. Do not add any more seasonings because that's not gonna do anything as far as making it stick together. Mine looks a little wonky, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in the pan. And then I'm just gonna smush it down to fill it out. This is what it should look like once it's all filled in the pan. We're just gonna pop this in the oven for about 30 minutes and then we're gonna come back and check on it. Once you take it out, you can see there's like pools and puddles of grease on the side and you're gonna pour that out in the trash can. Now be very careful because you don't want the entire meatloaf to fall out. You just wanna pour out the grease or at least as much as possible. Okay, now that I've poured out as much grease as possible, I'm gonna put it back in for 30 more minutes. While that's in the oven, I decided I'm gonna make a side. So I'm making red roasted potatoes. With this recipe, super simple. I'm sure you can find it on Pinterest. It's literally, you cut up the potatoes, season it with some olive oil, and then put it in the oven for pretty much, I do like 30 minutes or so, um, just depending on how crispy you want them. But I'm just gonna do a little speed through of this because I'm sure you guys have probably seen this recipe over and over again.
end of the last 30 minutes that your meatloaf is in the oven, you're gonna start making your sauce. So a few simple ingredients, you're gonna need A1 ketchup and then brown sugar. You're gonna take about a spoonful of brown sugar, more like a heaping spoonful. <laughs> And then you're gonna do A1 and ketchup. No matter how much A1 you put in it, you wanna put double ketchup. So because I like mine extra saucy, I'm gonna do three tablespoons of A1 and then six tablespoons of ketchup. You're gonna mix everything together. The second round of 30 minutes is up. You're gonna drain the grease again and then you're gonna come and put your sauce on it. And you're gonna put this back in the oven just for five more minutes. We still have our potatoes in there, so we're gonna let both of that sit in for five more minutes and then we'll plate. We are all done making our dinner, so we're gonna do a little taste test, which I've had this numerous times, but I know it's gonna hit, but just wanna do one on camera. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye.